George Floyd, mm -hmm. you know that unemployed drug addict? Oh, wow. With sure. the criminal record? Sure. Were you surprised when the blacks blamed the cop rather than blaming the unemployed drug addict for his death? Were you surprised when the blacks did that? Do you believe... No, I don't see a problem with that. I'm answering your question first. Okay. Yeah, do, were you surprised no. when Wait, hold the on blacks really quickly. pretended that it was the cops' problem instead of, uh, I mean, the cops' fault that George Floyd is dead, when George Floyd was an unemployed drug addict with a criminal record? So do you were think... Were you surprised at the blacks' reaction to that? Well, do you think that an unemployed drug addict do you think that because he was unemployed and, and addicted to drugs, which I'm not even sure he was addicted to drugs, but whatever, but do you think because he was unemployed, and let's assume addicted to drugs, that that somehow in and of itself resulted in the compression on his neck that denied his brain oxygen? You didn't answer my question. I am answering it. No, I asked you a question. Though. I asked you, were you surprised at the reaction of the blacks when the unemployed drug addict with the criminal record... <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Man, you really hate yourself in some ways, but was, it's true. So was, no, I'm was, not surprised. Were you surprised that the blacks blamed the cop and mm -hmm. not the addict? I am not surprised that the cops blame, the, that the black people, or not just black people, obviously a jury of his peers found it who were not black. Obviously coroners were not black in this scenario. I'm not surprised that the vast majority of sane people were able to recognize that the suppression, of, uh, the, the suppression on his neck resulted in a lack of oxygen, which ultimately caused his death. Both an independent coroner and the other coroner both found this to be true. So no, I would not be surprised that people who were, had access to the actual information released by the coroner were able to identify that this cop's action by putting his knee on his neck for that amount of time resulted in his death. So no, that's so not you're surprising saying, at all. You're saying, no, Jesse, I'm not surprised at the blacks blaming the cops rather than the unemployed drug addict with the record, with criminal record. I, I, if saying, that's what no, you took Jesse, from that, but let me ask you this. Asking, Do you blame no, the I coroner? Wanna be, I want to be clear. You're not I know. I question. answered the question are very you, directly. Are you saying yes, no, Jess, I'm not surprised at the reaction of the blacks. I think I answered it with some, ex with some additional information. But I, you didn't, I didn't hear yes okay, or no. Okay, I'm sorry. What, I'll say it one more time. Let me fully answer it. No, I'm not surprised. Oh, okay. that, that, hold on. No, All I'm not right. surprised. All right. no, I, got I got you. No, I'm not no. surprised, especially considering the information from the coroner clearly demonstrated that the suppression on his neck was caused by the officer, which resulted in his death. Do you think that a person being unemployed and crack, it, crack and, and, I'm sorry, and addicted to drugs would somehow result in compression in their neck, denying their brain oxygen? I think that he gets what he deserves. He doesn't care about his oh. own life. Jesse. If he had cared about, cared about his own life, he would not have been a drug addict and a criminal record. So do you believe because... Am I right about that? I, I, I totally first agree. Of all, I, yes, I do agree. I think that a person who values their life would probably not be addicted to drugs or have criminal records. Exactly. But would you say... he wasn't on the neck. Would you... Okay. Did, did the knee... Where, where the knee was placed... Near the neck, but not on the neck. Sure. Where it was placed, did it result in the, like, in the cessation of oxygen, of required oxygen... To his no. brain that resulted. So you disagree with the coroner? Yes. Oh, okay. So what did you, did you go to medical school? How'd you? Where'd you get this information? I went to common sense school. Oh, so common sense says that a coroner would just lie and make up that compression no, on the, the neck. No, the people around him lied and made it up. But the coroner but let himself me do this said it. because of time. Okay, got you. We're yeah, moving past that. I don't want to argue about that. You're right. Day. You're right. I don't need time is going by really fast. Here. You're right. Um, you said if I'm. It's been written here that you said. You didn't want to pick up food because you would have to drive through wealthy neighborhoods. And you thought the cops were going to pull you over. You said if I could put on a white skin for 30 minutes mm -hmm. while I go make food run, make food run, I would do it and I wouldn't feel nervous anymore. Did you for say sure. that? For sure, for sure. Why would you say something like that? Well, um, I happen to live in a, a pretty, a pretty nice neighborhood. Um, it's like super duper predominantly white. Um, it's you on, say you live in a neighborhood like sure, that? Sure, it's on the rich, rich side of town. And I think in the middle of all of the unrest, I would say the trauma caused by the um, George Floyd situation. You were traumatized by that? Absolutely. How old are you? I'm 37 now. And you were traumatized by George Floyd thing? For sure. What? Now? Do you not? Do, well, I, I know you're not a psychologist, what so the? yeah, I get it. I know you probably what struggle the? with psychology, but sure. So I would say that why, and it wasn't just that one in and of itself. Are you itself. grown or are you a baby? I think I'm a pretty grown man. How I, you gonna be traumatized by something like that? Do you think grown men can't be traumatized? No. 
Oh, they okay. can't if they're in a fallen state, but... Oh, you have to be in a fallen state. But go ahead, explain Yeah, why. basically, so what it was is I live in a pretty rich neighborhood, and, and ultimately, I recognized that, like, if you... I saw the, the circumstances around not just George Floyd, but then the surrounding events as well, and all of the other people, Armand Arbery, and so on and so forth, and the lack of accountability for cops gave me pause to consider the fact that if I am driving... At the time, I was driving a much worse car than I am now, and I felt somewhat uncomfortable with the idea that, man, me in this car, in this neighborhood, will stick out like a black, like like a sore thumb, and I can imagine police officers wanting to give me specific attention, being a black man in this neighborhood in this car, and so that gave me a little bit of pause and made me feel somewhat a, 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 a tinge of trepidation. Whoa. Ultimately, I would go get the food, but it, I think I that sort of that sort of thing. I'm a very risk averse person, Amazing. And, I, and I would say so. That why don't made you move nervous. out of your little rich white neighborhood? Why should I? But you're afraid of the whites. No, no, I'm not afraid of the whites. What is? I'm sorry. I, I don't know how you got that. You've from been what traumatized. I said. I, do you think that the trauma so would disappear if I was in a black neighborhood? So how do you around in your white neighborhood I drive in knowing that the cops may drive up behind you? What you doing over here, boss? I've adjusted and I drive around with faith in God that I will be protected, and that's how I live my life. Oh, amazing. And you say you have gone exclusively black dating now. Absolutely. No more white dating? No. Why only black? Well... So I would say that I felt the need. I think it's important for me to make sure that I raise my children without this, um, this need for, um, I'm sorry, to, without experiencing internalized racism. That's my goal. I think it's an important thing because that was a really painful thing that I went through having experienced it. And so I feel <laughs> like the easiest person, that would, the, the easiest way to do that is to instill self-love from the very beginning. And I think a black woman would probably be more equipped in helping my child to, um, to, 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 uh, to inherit that black love and that self-love and Amazing. to distance themselves so from internalized racism. So you want your child to have black love? For sure. But black love is dark and evil. I don't even know how to engage with that one, Jesse. Do you think God's love is black? I, I don't think God's love has a color. But what, what is black love then? Oh, black love is like the love of one, because we are black, like you and I. Um, <laughs> although you might forget it sometimes, I would say that. <laughs> the love of ourselves. I would say black love. But like black as a black don't man, have to love, love yourself. I think that a lot of times, well, ooh, what do you mean by that? Black people don't. Have love. There's no Jesse. Do you have love? Not all, not all, but most. Okay. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to engage with that. I would say that black people have love, but I do think you're right that that we are lacking some forms of self love because of like the historic like uh, Jim Crow laws and some of the colorism and things like that that have been instilled within no, black that's culture. That's why y'all like love, man. The oh. reason blacks don't have love is that they hate God. Oh, but I love God. No. How do I not love God? Because you can't love God and Satan too, man. I don't love Satan. Let me ask you this. Do you love white people? I love every people. Do you love white people? Sure, I love them too. Do you love white people? I love white people too, yes. Do you love white people? I just answered the question. Do you love white people? As much as I do everyone else, yes. So I love white do people. Do you love white people? I love black people, so yes, I love white people too. Do you love white people? Yes. Such a, it's such a simple, reductive question, but sure, I take from it what you want. But why don't you just answer yes? Because it's really reductive. What do you mean? Because, well, for example, I love all people. But I didn't ask you about all people. I know you didn't, but if I don't answer it in that way, someone can take away from it if I don't follow it up or provide more context. They can take no, that, oh, you only love white people. No, they're right? taking away that you don't love white because you got to add everybody else into it. Oh, I don't know how, if that's not how language works. No, I ask you, do you love white people? Sure. I, sure, I love everybody. Do you love white people? Sure, I love So if the answer is sure, too. sure means white yes. People. Sure, I love white people, but I love my dog too. Why do you do my voice so high like that, Jesse? Uh, Knock that off. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, um, do you support Black Lives Matter? No, the organization or the movement? The movement. Oh, I support the movement, but I think the movement is distinct from the organization. And, and what's the difference between the movement and the organization? Well, the organization is a specific select body that like, have their own ideology, which seems like it's rooted in some forms of Marxism and other things like that, which I completely distance myself from. I think capitalism is the absolute best economic system on the planet. However, I think the movement, I think most people in the movement who would use the slogan and things like that, considering how decentralized the movement is, are completely disconnected from the organization as a whole. And I support what the movement 
movement is focused on, which is to make sure that black lives are being valued in such that there would be justice for people who do wrong to black lives. But the organization is on some other nonsense that but I have the, nothing to do with. But the so-called movement was started by a bunch of fat, black, radical, socialist, communist, lesbians, right? Okay. So, lesbians! Uh, sure, so but that they, might be the genetic they fallacy. they anti-God, they don't believe in God, mm -hmm. how could the movement be right knowing that the, the founders were wrong. Well, that could be the genetics fallacy. For example, in this case, maybe these individuals did that, right? But then again, if we start moving and doing something independent of that, then at that point, then I, I don't think it That's necessarily... That's amazing. Would you, what did you think about the blacks attacking the Asians people, knocking them out, robbing them on the streets, and the media blaming it on white people? Oh, well, I'm sorry. I thought that the FBI actually released information that detailed that the vast majority of hate crimes against Asian Americans were coming from white people. But you didn't see white people doing it. You did see black people doing it. Mm, so I saw what both. did you think when they were show black people attacking the Asians? The guy who shot up that spa they, in Texas, but, but he was white. when they mentioned it, they would say white people doing it. Well, what did you think about that when you saw that? That didn't happen. The guy who shot up that they spa did. in Texas was white. W one guy, right? There but was five all women. The, other hundreds of black people were knocking Asians out in the streets and robbing them, and they were blaming it on the whites. So when you looked at the video, you saw white people too. So Jesse, do black. you just ignore data? No, I'm asking you. When you saw it was black people doing it, but you heard white people doing it, did you see white instead of black? I heard people actually saying black people were doing it, and then the data finally actually revealed that white people were doing but when it. You and so saw we were incorrectly people, assigned guilt on that thing. When you saw white that it was black doing it. I didn't. In your mind, you thought you saw white? I don't think I really saw a lot of imagery. I didn't really follow the, like, the imagery, but I think I just read a lot of, like, a, a lot of articles, and I read and I looked at the data. Do you believe uh, there is such a thing as white supremacy? Oh, for sure. Do you, you not? Do. And why do you believe that white people are superior to you? I don't believe white people are superior to But then to why me. do you call them white supremacy if you don't believe they are superior to you? White supremacy is an ideology. It is a belief system. And so white people can hold the belief that they are superior to me. They can. They're but just white not. people don't believe that. But do you black, believe there are no white people that believe that they're superior to black people? Maybe you can people? find one or two, but one it's the two. black people who see the white people superior to them. Why do the blacks see white people superior to them? I don't believe that that's what white supremacy means. You hear it from their mouth all the time. What, so the phrase white supremacy? Yeah, from the black. No, that, that's Why a reference. Why do the blacks see white people superior to them? That's a reference to an ideology, not to a state of being. What does that mean? In, in the black's mind, do they you believe... Not, you don't know what ideology means? Yeah, but are you saying that in the black's mind, they believe whites are superior? No. But the, it's not real? No, the blacks believe that the whites believe, I know this is two layers, so it might be hard for you to But the follow. whites don't ever say that about themselves. So there's no white nationalist organizations? You never hear, no, you never hear that You've never heard for anyone calling for an ethno state, white people? Well, I, I mean, aren't you a nationalist? No, I don't consider myself a, a you, nationalist. You're not a nationalist? No. You, were, you born I, well, here, were you born here in America? Sure. And you don't put your country first? I put God first. Not America? Not America first, So no. you're not a, you, you don't believe in your country being first? Not before God, absolutely not. Amazing. You, so, wait, wait, you put your country before God? You don't want to add to God, but I I'm put asking my you, do you put your country before any you put, other country? Okay. Oh, before first. other countries? Sure. America yeah. first, so you're a nationalist. I don't think that's what nationalist means. But I, I'm, you know what? I don't have the definition in it front of me, so you might be putting your right. country before other countries. Okay, well, if that's the case, then yeah, I probably put my country before others. So you're a nationalist? I don't, I don't, I have to read the word to be able to see that. But you believe in putting your country first before sure. other countries? I do be believe in doing So that. you're a nationalist. Okay, if that's what you believe that a, a nationalist is, so then sure, it, I'll accept so that. So you're a black nationalist? <laughs> I'm a nationalist who is back, black, is that what you're trying to say? You're a black nationalist. Do you understand the difference between a nationalist and a black nationalist and a nationalist who is black? Or do yeah, you not think that those three, three black, things are distinct? A, a nationalist is a black man who put his country first, a nationalist it's a, a, man, a black man who put the country first, or a country who put the black man, whatever, right? It's still, oh, yeah, so you don't know the difference. You're still a black nationalist. Okay, if that's what you believe. You don't believe you are? No, I don't. But you, you say you put your country first, right? But I hear you, but black nationalist has all sorts of different connotations.